what is up guys sergeant tnt here we're back from the video and welcome to mod monday which is the weekly series where we review all sorts of mods and awesomeness like that and today we are reviewing it's a mod that's not extremely amazing it, as far as like stuff to do but it really improves your minecraft experience in the sense of um how much you lag on how much you don't lag so as you can see in the top corner, I don't know why it's dropping so much. It never really does, but um, let me just turn it down to where normal would be. Probably like right there. Don't know why it's doing that. It never really does that, but um, just face this way. So, um, let's use zoom, which is a nice feature. So I can zoom in and see stuff from farther away. And I can, that, that's pretty much it as far as controls go, zoom. So, um, if you hit F3 or F, hold down FN and hit F3, it's different on some computers. Um, you see next to Minecraft 1.7.4, it says the, in parentheses the FPS and then the chunk updates. Ignore the chunk updates, look at the FPS counter. That's how many frames per second you're getting. If you don't know what frames per second is, it's how many frames your computer is drawing on your screen the more the better but um, I'm not gonna get too technical as basics I do know quite a bit about how frames work so if I look over here I'm gonna get slightly less just because it's rendering all these transparent blocks like the leaves and stuff as you can see leaves on my graphical settings are uh, half transparent so that makes the game lag more and you can also turn the leaves to be on fast to where they're not transparent. You'll just have little black lines in them instead of completely see-through. So, um, yeah. As you can see right here, this is my probably laggy spot. As you can see, I drop down a little bit. If I turn over here, the ocean, I'm getting much higher. So, that's basically the basics of frames. The higher, the better, as I said a minute ago. Um, most computers, unless you're on a gaming computer um are 60 hertz which is like your computer screen it re re renders up to 60 fps so if you see you're going over 60 fps you might want to turn on vsync which is if you go to video settings this optifine menu new settings options if you turn the max frame rate all the way down to vsync i leave it at max fps because uh even though i do climb over sometimes it's for some reason right now while I'm recording it never really does because I do record at 60 FPS which is exactly what my monitor is so um yeah let's get into the mod I'm just uh, telling you guys the technical stuff so if you hit escape go to options and go to the video settings you will see all these normally I do play on far but for some reason my recording is just being a little bit slow today um you can have it all the way down to tiny and you can't see very far ahead of you and stuff like that I mean two chunks that's not very much it's about 32 blocks and I never recommend playing on tiny unless you're on an extremely slow computer so I think my bare minimum I would be able to play at would be on short even shorts bad for me I'd probably just play on short if I had a really slow computer. And then there's normal. That's what that's what if you have a mid-range PC or like maybe a slightly better laptop. That's a re that's a decent. That's I think is nice normal. I think is like the best as far as FP cost of FPS to perform or performance. Basically, you got if you turn it down more, you get more FPS, but uh, worse graphics or like worse um, looking. So m normal is probably the best balance. But since I do have a gaming PC, I can go on far, which is basically normal times two. Tiny short is tiny times two. Normal is short times two, and far is normal times two. So yeah. I there in Optifine it lets you go even higher to far plus which can be 17 18 19 20 and up to 31 if you go to 32 that's double far that's only recommended if you have an amazing computer like me 
I I can play I can play on extreme just fine. That's double far, but I think that's complete overkill since you're never really gonna want to be able to see out that far. So I usually just leave it on far, or maybe you could go slightly higher if you do have a good computer. But uh, I just leave it on far because I like that the best. So I mean, as you can see, I can see out to that little little grass block over there, pretty much a little bit farther maybe. But um, yeah. So, and I just got a random frame stutter here. Um, that's your render distance. It's improved. I like it. Graphics, that's your default Minecraft settings. As you can see, if I turn it to fast, um, it's not going to affect anything because I, by default, in Optifine, deep into the Optifine settings, I have everything set to fancy. So that little button doesn't do anything for me. Smooth lighting. That's how well the lighting looks. If I have it completely off and turn this down all the way, this is how it looks. As you can see, there's no shading whatsoever on the blocks. As you can see, First, I'm when it comes to video games, I have to have the best possible lighting I can get that isn't too big of a performance hit because for, this just looks ugly to me. Sure, if you played some of the older Minecrafts, you might say, "Well, this looks fine. This is how a Minecraft originated." I played on 1.2.5 and it had smooth lighting by default. By default, the lighting was really good for a pixely game like Minecraft. So, um, whenever I have it off, I really notice it, and for some reason, not very many people notice the difference, for some reason. But I totally do. As you can see over here with this little sand pile, there's literally no shading whatsoever on it. Unless, like, except for these, like, sides. The sides have very minimal shading. So, um, yeah, as, as you can see, the character model isn't affected that much, so the block's definitely noticeable. So, if I turn it to minimum, that's probably would be my favorite if I did have a slower computer. As you can see, it's a little bit better, not extremely, but it, oh, I forgot, yeah, I need to turn that back up to 100 to get the best minimal. As you can see, I think, smooth, whoops, didn't mean to hit that, that's the GUI scale, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, this would probably be equivalent to minimum. That's a smooth lighting level. It, it, it doesn't look bad at all, in my opinion. So, I mean, if you did have a slower computer, this would probably be what I would recommend. So, I have it at 100 and at maximum. So, here's what everything maxed out as far as shading goes. As you can see, nice, nice soft shadows and stuff like that. So, I would just leave it at maximum. So... Max frame rate, that's how much frame rate you want to be limited to. I would only recommend limiting it to either unlimited or vsync, depending on how good your computer is. I leave it at unlimited because I want the maximum frames possible. Vsync does sometimes uh, lag it a little bit more, but um, that depends on what kind of computer you have. If you have a nice gaming computer or something like that, vsync shouldn't hurt you very much at all. So, um,. If you have a monitor that supports higher than 60, maybe 120 or 144, you could limit it to 140 or something like that. But mine's a 60, so I either choose to limit it at 60, VSync, or unlimited, and I just leave it at unlimited. So your frame rate, as I said before, that just limit that just puts a cap. So if I put it at 250, that means my computer FPS will not go higher than 250. Even though I won't notice the difference between 60 and 250 just because of what my monitor is. View bobbing, that is extremely noticeable. As you can see when I walk around, my hand moves back and forth. And I do need to set the time back today. So, that's your hand walking back and forth. Basically, if I turn it off, it looks sort of like you're gliding and the screen doesn't turn. As you can see, the screen would rotate a little bit as I was walking. So as you can see, some people just, even though they have a good computer, they choose to do that just because they like it. As you can see, the screen sort of shakes ever so slightly. It's barely noticeable. But um, I, I just choose to leave you bobbing on just because I like it. That really doesn't affect performance very much. That should be more of like an option. GUI skill, I leave it auto. auto. If you have an extremely bad computer, then a smaller GUI would be faster, as you can see. The crosshair is extremely tiny, and the little bar is extremely tiny, and so is the uh, thing. So, GUI scale is your 
is your inventory size and stuff like that. Okay, so then we have the advanced open GL. I'm not e extremely technical as far as this. I don't understand it completely, but I do know a little bit. Basically, this is like your rendering API, I guess. Um, I leave it on fast just because I don't see a difference. Basically, it's like the, how well it renders geometry. I put it on fast that because that's the fastest option, and I don't see any difference with it. So I just leave it on fast. Might as well get free FPS if you really don't notice the difference. Brightness, I this is moody. If you're in a dark cave... Then you would definitely notice if I see this dark spot here, it is really dark over here. So if I turn that up, it doesn't look as dark. I always leave my brightness on highest. That's built into Minecraft, so um, I don't know why I'm bothering. So here's what darkest area would look like on the highest brightness. I always leave the brightness maximum so I can see in caves because that bothers me if I can't see in a cave. So, chunk loadings, that's like your... How, how the chunks load a chunk is a 16 by 16 block area that goes all the way up into the air and all the way down to bedrock. Um, that's that ch Understanding how chunks work is very important if you're playing Minecraft because then you know how the measuring system works in Minecraft. That That's how distance is measured, I guess, is chunks. So, um, yeah. I usually leave it at smooth because that it basically it's more stable of your frames. It keeps it from jumping up or down while you're loading chunks. So I leave it at smooth. That's basically free FPS. Multicore just doesn't work out for me, even though I do have a multicore processor. Um, basically, that lets it use all the threads in your processor to uh, chunk, chunk generate three times faster. That just for some reason never works for me. It's always just a performance hit on me, and it leaves little chunk errors to where like. Chunk area is like a big hole in the world that really isn't existent there. It's just data trying to load. I just leave it on smooth. Fog, that's the little fog out in the distance. Um, let me you know, come over here. That grass block will... S okay, this I that island over there. As you can see, it's fading out. That's the fog. I leave it on fancy. It's not that much of a performance. Hit. You can have it off where there's absolutely no fog. That's nice if you're trying to see as far as possible on um, the lowest render distance. So, I mean, tiny might be a bit way more playable if you turn the fog off. And then if you have it on fast, that's just very light f fog. As you can see, I can't see that. It's thicker fog, basically. And then fancy is like dual-layered fog to where you can see a little bit more. So, I just leave it on fancy. I like fancy. Fog start, that's if you want to start near for the player. That's basically, basically it's like more loss of render distance, so I don't know why they put that in there. I leave it at point eight because that's the farthest, so I leave it at point eight if I were you. Server textures, that's uh, if you're joining a server, like if you're joining a minigame server and it requires a built-in resource pack into the server to run. That's basically if you want that to be enabled or disabled, it's usually not a big performance hit unless... You're on an extremely slow computer, and I know most of you guys who are subscribed to me aren't aren't on great computers, but they're not bad computers either, so I just leave this on. So, uh, quality. This is a little subsection. The rest of these are little subsections. So, quality, mipmap levels, that's how much detail or how much it blurs. I, if you want the least amount of lag, leave it at 4. Basically, out in the distance, it's going to freeze for a minute to let it load up. There we go. As you can see, if I look out into the distance, you'll see, without without me zooming, if I zoom, as you can see, the sand is less grainy. So, you can't see the graininess in the little sand textures there. So, But if I do zoom in, you can see it perfectly fine. So, if you want the least lag, put that up to 4. I leave it out off because I don't need that. It basically makes everything as detailed as possible. It, even though it says this option usually does not perfect the performance, I see it does perfect the performance. The, the affect the performance, um, depending on what kind of computer. It does vary. A lot of people have different PCs, setups, and stuff like that. Mip map type. I don't exactly know what this is, but I leave it at trilinear. You can kind of experiment to see what works best for you, but basically it's like how it renders the mip mapping. So. Yeah. 
and anisotropic filtering, if I pronounce that correctly. That's your texture detail. So, um, that's standard texture detail. If I turn it all the way to 16, that's going to have the best detail. If you're on a slow computer, I just leave this off by default. But if you're on a, a nicer computer, 2 to, eight, 2 to 16, I leave this off because I it doesn't bother me too much. It's free FPS for me. Anti-aliasing. Um, it says effective after restart, so I might just pause the recording just to show you what this is or do a screenshot side by side at how, what the difference is. So, um, anti-aliasing is basically, as you can see, if I look up, hang on, let it load. If I look up at the sun and I look on an angle, if you look very, very closely, you will see some jagged edges. You could probably see it on my hand way better, so I'm just going to look at the corner of my hand. As you can see, there's little tiny jagged edges if you look really close. I don't know how well YouTube will show the detail. But on my side, um, there's little tiny jagged edges. Basically, anti-aliasing eliminates that. It keeps that from happening. I, w I would probably turn that on. I just never bothered. But, um, I always can. And if it'll, uh... Uh, work, but um, I'm just sh showing you what that is. That basically eliminates that. The higher value, the more it's going to eliminate that. So, um, yeah. Clear water. That's basically how well the water is rendered and stuff like that. If I go down here, as you can see the water, you can see pretty well in. So, if I turn that off, you can't see very well in the water. Um, I usually turn it on so I can see better in the water. So, I like that. Um, better grass. As you can see, there's like the standard grass texture here. If I turn it on, oops, and as you can see, it changes the grass texture to where hills look more nicer and more natural, as you can see. Um, I should probably turn this on. I don't know why I don't I don't have it on, but um I should probably just leave it on. It does look nice. As you can see the hills look a lot more natural and stuff like that. So it depends on how well your computer is. Um for some reason this does lag some computers because basically it's a texture over the original grass texture, so it's like double texture thing or something like that. So, um it could lag a really old PC, but I don't think it would lag most recent PCs so I mean if you have a PC that's about a year old or something like that it shouldn't really bother it too much and I'm getting random frame starters because chunks are loading around me so um yeah sorry this mod review is taking a while I'm trying to go into detail through all the settings just so you guys can get the best frames out of your Minecraft and get the best experience possible because I know Minecraft doesn't take that good of a computer to run properly. Trust me, I had an older graphics card. It was a GT 610, and that that game that game ran perfectly fine on there. So, um, so um, yeah. Sorry, I have a little pause there. Whatever. Um. Basically, I did have an older graphics card. It was like a 2009 graphics card. And it doesn't run very many games well. The only game it ran well was Minecraft. And it didn't bother me at the time. But now that I'm, my, I'm trying to get a little more variety on my channel, I did need that upgrade to a GTX 650 Ti, which is amazing. Um, it's a mid-range. So I might, I'm not going to ramble on about graphics cards because some, some of my viewers probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So... Um, yeah. Let's see, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, better grass can be fast and fancy. Um, I'm just gonna put that on fancy. So, random mobs, that's, uh, if you have a resource pack that has different textures for, like, the same, te multiple textures for the same mob. In one resource pack, there there's, like, five different creeper textures, and there's like a blue creeper, a red creeper, a green, cre the regular creeper, and stuff like that. Basically, it allows for that to happen, for that different creeper colors to happen. So, if I turn that off, basically all the creepers would be the same color. It would be the default creeper texture. 
so um that usually doesn't affect performance too much so yeah better snow is basically the same thing as better grass except in like your snow biomes um custom fonts would be your f some resource packs change the font type on the little buttons and stuff uh that shouldn't affect performance too much and it uh Basically, change if you have it off, it leaves the regular Minecraft font on there. But if you if you have a good if you have a a fairly decent computer, this shouldn't bother the performance too much, if at all. Uh, custom colors is your like if you had different colored background buttons and stuff like that. Uh, that basically turns them on or off. Swamp colors if you go into a swamp. As you can, if you notice, the water is darker and the grass is darker. If you have that on, it'll make the grass darker and the water darker. If you have that off, it won't. It'll be the same color as like the water I'm looking at right now and the grass I'm looking at right now. So let's see, quality boom, boom, and let's see, smooth biomes. That's basically how the biome borders look. Um, I don't exactly understand what this does. It says the smoothing of biome borders is done by sampling and averaging the color of all surrounding blocks. Okay, so basically this is like the swamp thing. It changes the color in the water and stuff like that, per depending on biome. I haven't noticed that too much, but uh, it, shouldn't have per eh, it shouldn't affect performance too much. Connected textures. I can demonstrate this. Let me get some glass. So, um, yeah. Uh, be right back. So, um, yeah. Alright, so we're back, and, uh, we're demonstrating the connected textures and crap. So, um, connected textures, basically, see how it connects the glass together into one big texture with no borders. If I went in, and where is it, and turn that off, as you can see, the little borders appear. So, I love connected textures. That's one of the reasons why I got the mod. And, um, it, it's nice. It doesn't really affect the performance too much, so I would just turn it on, at least on fast. Um, but if it lags more for some reason, just to turn it off, then. Natural textures would be, um, it removes the grid-like pattern created by repeating blocks of the same type. Basically, it rotates and flips the textures around just to make it look more natural. That's mainly for, like, the grass and the leaves, as you can see. Look right here. As you can see, it's upside down right here and right side up right here, as you can see. Right there. Whoops, I accidentally broke it. But, as you can see, it kind of rotates them around and stuff like that. It makes it look more like a tree. So, I think I could do a little compare. Listen. As you can see, over in the corner where my mouse is, you can see that flip around a lot. So, um, turn it on. Custom sky, if you do have a resource pack that changes the sky up a little bit, basically, it lets that change the sky. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see, I'm going through this as fast as I can. Clouds, that's your clouds. Uh, you can have them not at all. Default is... If you have this in the main tab over here, if you have it set to fancy default, would make by default make it fancy, or if you had it on fast, it would make it fast. But you can like change each one, because when I had my GT610, the trees would lag me, so I just left it on fast instead. As you can see, it changes. So, but now I can have it be nice and fancy. So, clouds will be your 3D clouds. My clouds even show up for some reason. Optifine doesn't make a cloud show up very well for some reason. Unless there's somewhere else in my settings where clouds are off. But um, you can have them not at all. I usually have them not at all. And then says cloud height. Uh, I just leave it off. It doesn't really affect performance. So. Um, yeah. Trees. Fast and fancy. As you can see, I'm making it change. I leave it on fancy. But if you have a slower computer, definitely put it on fast. It does make a the performance a lot different grass that's like how detailed the grass is i guess don't really notice the difference if you want free fps set it to fast um i leave it on fancy because i don't notice the fps difference 
Some of the older computers will probably have a more noticeable difference. Um, let's see. Then, rain and snow. Yeah, that's your rain and stuff. You can have that completely off. You'll still hear the sound, though. I would definitely leave that off if it lags you a bunch. Leave it off if you need to. But some some of you people might like the rain and put it, want to put it on fast. I leave it on fancy because my computer can handle it. Uh, sky, if I have it off, as you can see, it's grayish and doesn't look good. Leave it on. I mean, it's not a performance hit very much. Stars, same there. That's not much of a performance hit either. Depth fog. I leave it on because it does improve FPS when you're mining in caves. So, the higher you are, the more the render distance is. Well, if you're above 64 degree. If you're above 64, that's your default world height. It's 64 blocks is your Y. So, right here, it's... it's 63 right here would be your default so if you go lower the shorter the render distance is going to be so if you're mining in a cave and you're trying to look into the ravine um it's going the your fog is going to be much closer to you because it's a depth fog i leave it on it doesn't bother me that much it makes the cave more scarier and suspenseful i like it hold item tool tips so if i hold an item in here Basically, when I go over it, it doesn't show up wool in the little, I'm above the hot bar. So, if I go back there, if I turn it on, as you can see, it says wool. So, every time I do that, um, yeah. I usually leave mine. I, I just like them. I just, especially if I'm using a resource pack that I'm not familiar with, it lets me know what items are what. So, yeah. Okay. Translucent blocks. I don't really get this too much. You're going to have to experiment with how it looks and the performance it. Um, dropped items. Okay, let me go to it. Hang on. Let me get a pick or something or a sword. As you can see, if I drop it, it spins around and it's 3D and it's got a little shadow there. If you want, if on fast, if I go to it, it'll drop it like the... Uh, old school minecraft it'll drop it 2d like that um this is sort of a performance hit so if you do if you do have a slower computer definitely set this to fast um but if you do have a nicer computer set it to fancy it, it looks cool so um yeah on to the performance tab we're almost done here you guys sorry for this long video smooth fps Always print that, put that on. It's frame stabilization. It keeps the frame rate constant and keeps it from dropping down to five all of a sudden and spiking back up to a hundred. That gets really annoying, and uh, this smooths it out to like an average. Smooth world on. It's frame stabilization again. Low to far. I put it on on. Makes no difference for me because I always I already have my render distance at far, but I leave it on for some reason. Basically. Even though you have your render distance on short, it's still loading the chunks out beyond what you can see. I leave it on because it uh, 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 removes the stutter from chunk updates. Uh, depends on what kind of computer you have. This can really hurt you or this can really help you. It just all depends. So, um, yeah. Let's go back to the performance tab. Preloaded chunks, that's... Uh, that's basically how far it loads the chunks. It's sort of like load far, but, um, yeah. Load far also allows for fast render distance switching without suffering the lag. Chunk updates, I leave at 5. That's, I, that updates the chunks. If you have a slower computer, leave it at 1. If you have a fast computer, if you have a medium computer, put it at 3. If you have a slow computer, put it at, er, if you have a fast computer like mine, Leave it at five. It shouldn't hurt you. Dynamic updates. If you're if you're standing still, it'll update much more. As you can see, if I'm moving around, if I'm moving around, uh, some okay, sometimes it spikes up to two hundred, and if I'm standing still, it's going to it's it varies. It doesn't make too much of a difference. I leave it on because I like having the chunks updating constantly to let it load better. So it can really hurt you or can really help you. It just all depends. Fast math, leave on, it it increases the FPS a little bit. 
always helps. Lazy chunk loading, it's smoother, so it basically smooths it. Um, I would leave it on. Fast render. This is faster rendering. It optimizes your graphics card to load better. So, that stuff is great. Animations. This is your particles. Note, always have this at dynamic. If I have it on, if especially with the lava, the lava doesn't look right. It'll look old school. Or it won't look as neat. Um, I have it on dynamic. Unless that was for older Minecraft, I think it was fixed now. But... Leave it at dynamic, it's always better. But, um, yeah. Uh, for the water and lava, put it at dynamic. You can have these all off, all on. Um, this can hurt you or help you. It depends on your computer. Some of these you might want off, and some of these you might want to leave on, just for the look. And especially fire. If I catch myself on fire, you'll see the flame dot text, as you can see. Or it's not animated. Let me go back to that and see if I did something wrong there. Um, yeah, flame animated. It should be. F oh, that's flame. Fire. It'll do that, and it just doesn't look good. If you have a decent computer, this shouldn't hurt you. Honestly, just leave it on. It looks better. Um, I mean, you can kind of mess around with this. Dripping water and lava is an important one you might want to leave on. Portal animated isn't as important. Um, yeah, just experiment with some... Th this whole tab you can experiment with and see what you like. And on our last tab, finally. Lego meter, I leave off. It's faster, plus I don't even use it. Just leave it off. It's kind of just a bunch of nonsense information. Unless you really understand how the ticks work, and how chunk loading works, and how the frames work, and everything. I don't know completely about everything, so I just leave it off. It, it doesn't bother me. Debug profile. If you have it off, it's faster. Um, just leave it off. If you not like a clean... Basically, it's that little thing right there. Makes no sense whatsoever to me. So, as you can see... Now if I go back, it doesn't do that as much. Okay, let's see here. Weather on. I leave it on. If you have a really, really bad computer, turn it off. But if you're in multiplayer, the rain's gonna... It, the weather will work by normally. So, if you're in multiplayer, this won't affect anything. It won't change anything. If you're on single player, it will. Time, that's uh, day only, night only. So, if I did put it at night only, it would automatically be night, and it will stay night. So, yeah. That's that's for single-player worlds as well. So, whoops, video settings, other. I leave it at default. This doesn't affect the performance at all. Full screen. That's self-explanatory. Full screen mode may be faster or slower if you have a really slow computer. Full screen will be better. Because it won't render the desktop in the background if you're on windowed mode like I play on. So I can switch between programs faster. Um, it'll lag me a little bit more even though I have a gaming computer. It doesn't really affect me that much at all. And then you could have the resolution of your full screen. So I could turn it all the way down and like, make the g game look grainy. Check the resolution of your monitor. They vary, especially on a laptop. On a desktop, it's more standard. It, it Nowadays, 1080p is usually the standard, at least. But uh, I've seen some PC gamers go high up to like 1440p and stuff like that. And maybe even f 2K and 4K. 2K is twice the resolution of 1080p and 4K is four times the resolution of 1080p. It's a very big performance hit depending on what computer you have. If you have a gaming computer with a high resolution monitor, it's not going to affect you very much. I have a 1080p monitor and I have a nice gaming computer. I have a mid range gaming computer. So everything plays fine in 1080p. 1080p is what I recommend. But if you do have. A laptop, it's usually going to be 1680 by 1500, 1600 by 1024, or 1600 by 900. 
and then 1366 by 768 or maybe 1360 by 768 only the, the resolution is only going to change if you're in full screen mode if you're in windowed mode it's going to be whatever how big your monitor is it's just going to fit itself and it's going to be a custom resolution so 3d analog graph that's uh if you have 3d glasses you can play in 3d it's not amazing 3d but it is technically 3d I don't save, I leave it at three minutes. Basically, it's automatically going to save the world every three minutes. If you leave it at two seconds, it's going to lag like crazy, no matter what kind of computer you have, for the most part. If you have a really slow computer, auto put it at the maximum auto save. I think it's 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, you're going to get that little tiny lag spike for a brief moment. So let me, let me change the time to day. Okay, I that's about it sorry for such a long video and then the reset video settings button will put everything at its default uh sorry for that long video i was just trying to let you guys maximize your fps even on slower computers um this mod is one of my favorite mods just because it's easy to install and um it basically improves the fps on almost any computer unless you have an extremely extremely slow computer it's not going to really affect anything at all i had an older computer it did affect it a lot and it was great went from 15 to about 30 it was nice so that is it you guys sorry for like the 40 minute video almost probably um this is going to take forever to render but uh yeah. So, thanks so much for watching. Comment and subscribe. I hope you F your FPS gain was amazing. On some, on my friend's laptop, it decreased it for some reason just because it couldn't handle a mod very well. This is a very basic mod, so it shouldn't affect it too much unless you are on a really bad computer like my friend was. Uh, sorry to her. Probably making fun of her computer. Because, but, yeah. Um, thanks so much for watching again. And I'll see you in the next video.